Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast, I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are again. It is Monday, May the 3rd, 2021. This is Clyde J. Kale, and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 95. And I am here once again with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everybody. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. And for our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see our recommended uh, discussion links there. And this might be a little bit shorter podcast than normal, but uh, this week we're going to talk a little bit about our uh, studio practice and how the uh, it's easy to get confused between the art career and the life of an artist. And, uh, I, uh, saw a web interview with, uh, Paul Klein of a artist, Mia Perelman, Perelman, I think is how you say her name, uh, who, uh, had an interesting, uh, quote in there, uh, about that, uh, many artists will, um, they will, uh, get their career confused with their art life. You know, careers, It's ego enhancing, uh, your money oriented, uh, getting, entering in shows, exhibitions. It's all the uh, activity of a working artist, but the art life, the artist's life is the creativity, the process. And just because they are not successful in the career, they, this sometimes causes problems for the creativity and that the two are actually separate, and you should keep that uh, in your uh, frame of mind. Uh, Diane, what's uh, what's your uh, take on that? I don't know that any time I create, I think about how much I'm going to be able to sell a painting for. <laughs> I don't think it it's not part of what I think about when I'm doing my work, I guess. I mean, it's nice to think about when you get it finished, and you, know, you want to put it out there somewhere, but... I don't think it, I don't really think about it when I'm um, getting ready to start, a, you know, working on something or it's not, that's not the reason I'm doing it. It's like, it's like a second thought, you know, it's a secondary thought to me. So in other words, you don't make your art for the market, you know? Uh, no. 
No, I mean, I guess everybody knows like certain things sell, you know, you know, like a red barn and <laughs> roosters and <laughs> there's, certain, there's certain things that will always sell, but I don't, I don't paint for that reason. I, I don't even know if I've ever done a red barn or a rooster, <laughs> but anyway, uh, um, I don't, yeah, I don't paint for the market at all. Constance, how about you? Um, I used to when I was younger worry about whether somebody would like to buy it or not and I worried about whether someone would like that painting or and I would try to think about would it be a nice enough painting to sell and now I just um, like to paint for myself and really I have some paintings up for sale but a lot of the paintings that I have now are not for sale they're just in my house hanging around and I just enjoy them for myself I know that sounds weird, but I have a lot of paintings that are just hanging in the house and they're not up for sale anywhere. I so. think that was a point that uh, Mia Perlman was, was making that uh, too many artists, they, they, uh, they, they get confused or they, or they actually get themselves in trouble by uh, trying to create for the market. Uh, they have uh, concerns of, well, you know, to get in, into this exhibition, I have to do this style of painting or to uh, uh, sell uh, this particular piece. Uh, I have to uh, work in, in uh, this method or use this process. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that normally works. I mean, you might be able to get away with it once or twice, but it's hard. It's not if it's not genuine to who you are, it's hard to produce that kind of work that way like you can't produce quality you just yeah well even even any kind of work <laughs> you can't yeah. keep doing something that's not genuine to who you are it's not you're not going to be able to keep that up yeah i i i agree wholeheartedly um the i haven't had uh, much uh, formal education but what formal education i did have when i was young uh when i was in my teens was geared toward a commercial art career and had i continued it and not joined the military you know, i would have been slotted for a career as a commercial artist you know in the advertising industry and now as it's thank god that I joined the military and dropped out of that because I've ran across so many commercial artists, successful commercial artists. Um, Paul Mishik was one that was in our group. You know, he was a very successful, award-winning commercial artist. He was burnt out. He just completely, you know, it it, it feels you get into uh, the feeling of uh, like a trained seal. You know, you mm -hmm. you're, you're only creating art. For, for somebody else, which, you know, goes in hand with working a commission, you know? Well, yeah, and the thing is you're being, you're being given parameters to work within when you're working like that. They're mm -hmm. not, it's not your work. It's you're being told what to do, what colors they want it to be, what size they want it to be. You know, it's, there's all these parameters that they, um, they'll, they'll give you a sheet. I don't know if you've ever seen one. And they have all the stipulations that they want the work to be on that sheet. And you have to create work within that framework. Wow. It's real. it's, you know, it's, it's soul, it is soul sucking to do that. And, I can't and a lot of times they tell it. you, yeah, they tell you the style they want, but, you know, it's like, a lot, it depends on how um, well you're known or whatever. Like they probably wouldn't have told Rockwell what to paint, no. but you know, but he was already at the point where he was. He was already pretty established, and everybody knew who he was. And he was, you know, well, when doing he was his younger, own thing. Kind probably, of, they probably but, told him what. To yeah, do. but when he was younger, they probably did. Uh, so. I watched a couple of videos from Steve Houston. He started out his uh, career like <laughs> a commercial artist, and he used to. Uh -oh. Yeah, he got burned out. He uh, he told people that uh, he uh, uh, was you know, working, you know, 50 hours a week. He couldn't keep up. He was making great money, but he was doing a lot of the, uh, whenever uh, uh, VHS videos came out, he was doing a lot of the cover art 
for, for all the various uh, horror movies and whatnot. And he completely got himself, you know, burnt out. So I am so glad because, at, at, you know, over the years I think about, God, I could have had this career or that career. No, I am so glad that maybe the Lord was said, it's not, it's not your time yet. It's not ready yet. <laughs> he you know, pulled me back, you know, because now, now I create art exactly for what I uh, uh, want, exactly how I feel. True, I do kind of, you know, I'm, I, I like entering these uh, jury competitions online. And so I keep an eye on, you know, what, uh, what, what subject they're looking for, you know, for the upcoming contest. And I tend to uh, paint something toward that. But it's my own creation. It's my own. Well, that's a lot different than doing commercial art. Yeah, and you're not having to do it. Like if you if you don't like the topic they pick, you don't have to do it. Right. That's <laughs> Where different. if you're yeah if you're being told that's what you they want, then they, you got to do it if that's your job. I mean, I work in the licensing industry, and it was same. It was similar to that. It wasn't. I mean, we had deadlines, and but they would give you a sheet of all the stipulations they wanted. You know, things they were looking for, and we had to create whatever they told us, and it was. And, and, you know, you're being told what color to make it. It's like, <laughs> it, it was crazy. And then, you know, you'd send it in and they say, oh, it's a little too, you're too bright of a red. So you make it duller, a duller. So they'd send it back and you had to repaint it. It was like, it was just crazy stuff. And I think I, that I, I got, that's one of the reasons I quit because I couldn't, it, it was burning me out. Too, and it was yeah. affecting my own work of stuff that I wanted to be doing. So it was. Nowadays, the, uh, the like you said, soul sucking. <laughs> it is. Book industry is is get is getting like that. You know, the illustrators for comic books. You know, Marvel and DC and and a lot of these younger kids. You know, they um, yeah, you know, they think it's great working for Marvel. And uh, a lot of <laughs> when they're older, you hear them talk and they get burnt out. You know, they you know, you can only draw Batman and Superman. <laughs> Time so many different ways that <laughs> before, yeah, it kind of you know burn you know, gets you burnt out yeah, and yeah. So, well you know when you're doing comics like that you have a strip and it's like over and over and over again to do from one progression to the other you know and the same it's the same character and going from one and you just do it over and over and over again you know. Yep, exactly. And that's why, you know, her uh, uh, discussion was geared toward, okay, so that's a, that, that's a career aspect, okay? And if all you do is you have – it's important. Your career – it's important to maintain your career. It's important to, to follow a certain strategy, but don't let that be your single most important thing in life. If you're not successful in that, then it's going to hurt your quality. It's going to hurt your 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 art life, your practice, because the life of an artist is an actual life. It's an actual lifestyle, you know, of, of uh, getting up and 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 coming up with an idea and and either putting it in drawing or painting or sculpture or whatever, getting expressing that that uh, that emotion or that viewpoint that is takes a tremendous amount of energy and uh effort and well as as our one one of the things that i like to say is that as artists people can see what we're thinking and not i mean as a writer people can see what you're thinking but not everybody can see what you're thinking for everyday person but that's what's cool about being an artist People can see what you can make people see what you're thinking by being an artist. You can either paint it or write it or sing it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what's cool about being an artist. Is putting it out there so people can see it. it doesn't make you a lot of money, and if it doesn't sell a lot, yeah, but it's being creative is so cool. So <laughs> what? Don't don't let that uh, don't don't let that stop you. You know that you you will yourself into trouble 
uh, into the, we had a video from our famous art teacher, our favorite art teacher, uh, Stefan Bauman. We, I think we had watched this before, but I just thought it was good to repeat when he's talking about, uh, you yeah, know, painting, practice, 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 practice. Every painting you do is practice for the next one. And now I recall it was probably two years ago when I first came across uh, Stephen, Stephen Bauman and hearing, and hearing his uh, speech about that. And it really didn't ring with me, but it rings true now because when I get done with the piece and I, I'm satisfied with it, and then I looked at it a month later and I said, okay, now I know what the next one I do, I'm going to change that because that doesn't look so good. <laughs> I can, I know I can do better. <laughs> what's called growing as an artist. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. You should be able to look back and at your older work and see all the things you want to change. It's really tempting to take it off the wall and fix stuff. And, but you know, it's, you just got to move on and there make are, it better in the next one. There are a couple of things that I've done the, the last couple of years that I am actually going to do what Kelly Wilson calls reinventing, where you, <laughs> you don't paint over it, but you just either add to it or embellish. Or There's a couple I got picked out that I'm going she to. She also has this little sander that she uses on them to sand them down to the to the uh, the uh, gesso layer and, and paint paint some more gesso start over. on there and start, start over. <laughs> I uh I just put a layer of uh of uh, gesso or a layer of uh some old paint uh, on the top of them and just paint another thing on them. <laughs> so, so Diane, do you uh do you agree with what Stephen Bauman says? Well, yeah, I mean you want to you want to paint so that every time you get better. Like you know, you, if you look at, back at the painting you just did, you can see things that you need improvement on or you want to change the next time or whatever. So I think that's, you know, something that every artist should do. You always try to, you know, paint better the next one. I think, yeah, and don't paint with sticks. Yeah. <laughs> I had to throw a couple of sticks out when I started painting in this last time. You wear your brushes down so much, but there's not any hairs. And basically, yeah, you can't paint with a stick. I have some of them, but you can get some really good scraping things done. With them. Yeah, well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's just funny. Yeah, for our listeners, the other two videos was our uh, Gary Vanacek, you know, his uh, smack in the face. I, I just, I'm not going to go into details, but if you guys need a motivation, you, uh, you know, like. It goes, I think it uh, encompasses what we said so far that uh, you can't be a people pleaser. You've got to do. Uh -huh. Otherwise, you won't make any progress. You won't get anywhere. If you're trying to please somebody all the time, you know. If you, you ever need to be cheered on or, or need an uplift in life, go listen to Gary for a while. He will pull you out of your doldrums and just sure. give you that oomph you need to get back in it, you know. And That's if, it motivational that's for sure Talked by uh you know his sailor mouth uh or his new jersey talk as he said well just kind of ignore that <laughs> you just how to gain confidence and overcome your fears connect with people that's what he does he's a serious motivator there, he's really good at what he does too and it's interesting some of his earlier videos uh yeah we've been watching for quite some time as early as he always said that he never wanted to be a motivational speaker, but that's what he's turned into. He's yeah. good at it. Yeah. And you know, he, he's so, uh, you can't, uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, you know, Gary will get you, pick you out of, out of the dumps and, uh, get you going. He tells you how it is too. He doesn't pull, pull like punches. He, he, he tells you straight up how it is. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's very down to earth and, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't mess around with what's going on. He just is flat out lets you know what he's thinking. Exactly, and you know, just artists like you say, you can say, "Well, I'm an artist." Well, then, okay, why aren't you painting or drawing or or whatever? Well, I mean, I encounter this whenever where I used to work. Uh, you know, some of the younger kids, uh, 
they would find out that I was an artist and would give them my, you know, my card. You know, I said, yeah, that's my site. Just go look and you see my stuff, you know, and they said, and they would always come back with, yeah, well, I draw sometimes. Really? Uh, well, have you ever thought of a career? Well, school is too expensive. I said, well, I didn't go to school. Their eyes get real big. What? <laughs> if you're an artist. You can learn anything you want to online. Why do you need to go? To sc- you can go to school if you want to. And they're young enough, probably the ones that you. Absolutely. They're, these are in their 20s. You know? Yeah, they're still young enough to go. I mean, me, I would say uh, it's a little late. <laughs> Just uh, 70 years old is a little late, but still. Like Gary says, you know, don't dream about it. Do it. Yeah. Get out. And- you don't well, want it bad enough you're not doing it. <laughs> yeah, there is that. <laughs> well, I'm still painting. I mean, well, except for since September, I haven't painted much. But that's not because I didn't want to. That's because I haven't felt good. <laughs> hey, this artist life is the best life in the world. Sometimes you make some money. Sometimes you don't. But... It's the life we chose. It's an awesome power. It's such an awesome gift that we have. And so humbling that we are able to take nothing and make it into something. And like I always say, to put a smile on someone's face and a twinkle in their eye and maybe help them get it through a bad moment of their day. I've done my job. If I... If if my viewers come away with that, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, I think got some announcements here. Diane, you've been working on this project on your uh, website. Tell us a little bit about that before we close out. Yeah, well, before I had a page on my website, I still have this page for all the podcast um, things we've done, episodes, and I had them all listed out before each, each week I would, put it added on there and so we had it all a big long list because <laughs> we've done a lot of podcasts and it was getting longer and longer so I looked around I researched and I found this um, app that I could put on it's really like a, a program where I could put all the episodes of our podcast into and just have a single um, video kind of thing where you can go in and play all the different podcasts so it has a search bar in it so you can put in any kind of topic that we may have talked about and it'll bring up every episode that that word was mentioned in so Clyde said he checked it out and he he was looking at certain things um I forget which terms you used one time but it's pretty cool yeah you put you put the word in and it brings up every episode that that word was ever mentioned in and it brings it right to the point in that in that episode where it was, where we talked about that specific thing. So it's pretty neat if you're looking for a specific topic, um, you can just go in, put that in the search bar and it'll bring up all the episodes we ever discussed that topic on. So that's pretty neat. Yeah, quite a few episodes. We're coming up on a uh, hundred episodes here. Unbelievable. <laughs> We've been doing this often, <laughs> but a lot of material is do. Some of it's repeats, yes. but it's this, this, the things we talk about for our listeners and for our, our artists, listeners and our collectors and people who are interested in art, uh, they need to be repeated sometimes over and over again. Um, I post an example, like I've, I've been enrolled in this, uh, Kelly Polson's, uh, online class and she put a question up on her, on her Facebook page. Uh, what is the most important thing that you've been taught in this class? And I posted there, I said, learning how to paint glass and metal, metal pots, learning how to, to create that illusion in, in oil paint. Uh, when she demonstrated that several times, several of her videos, uh, I'd seen it before. And I had an aha moment. I said, oh, wow, that is so easy. Then I felt dumb because it's so obvious. But then it comes back to sometimes, and Stephen Bauman says this a lot, he says, if you're not ready to hear it, it won't won't register. 
One of the things that I learned from her, which has been so helpful, is space and placement. Yeah. That has been one of the, I was having, I, I had it before, but it, I took 12 years off from painting to make jewelry. And, but when I started back with the still life, I just was not able to get it back, you know, the space and placement. But that was the one thing. And she said she had a horrible time with it too when she was painting it first. And what she did was she went ahead and got an inexpensive frame and put the things in the, put the frame on the, the uh, painting first. And then she was painting it in there. But then she, I was watching what she was doing before after, after that. And then she was putting, actually putting the grid on the painting and then putting everything into the grid, which would help me immensely. I mean, immediately when I saw her doing that, I got it. Yeah, I so. thought about that because I started, I, I started using her method too and it's worked. But um, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the focus of this is uh, uh, as, you know, we may repeat some, some subjects in our, you know, in our different episodes, but uh it's kind of like that. Maybe that listener uh, wasn't ready to hear it yet. Yeah. Maybe we, we'll give them, or that uh, that collector or that artist, we'll give them an aha moment. I hope. Mm. That's what well, sometimes you can say this to talk about the same subject, and you do it in a different way, and all of a sudden it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, just the way you worded it or, or something, and it clicks. Like, And you'd mm -hmm. heard it bunches of times before you just it just didn't you, you weren't ready to register hear it yet. with your brain yet yeah <laughs> Stephen Baum, ready to hear it yet so mm -hmm. that's what these that, i hope that's what we are providing for our listeners of of these uh, various episodes and uh see diane had her announcement constance you got any kind of announcement here what's the big thing the big thing in your life now is different than before uh, I'm hoping that I'm getting my health issues under control so I can get back in the studio on a more regular basis. I was going to say, and you are in your studio. Tonight, yeah, I'm in the studio. So in a long time that you've been yeah, in. Yeah, it's been, what, seven months now that I've been over in the house, working from the house instead of being over here. That's a big announcement. It's that been since September that I've be been. But that's a big announcement because when you're in your studio, you see your brushes, you see your paint, and they, yeah. start, they start calling me. <laughs> talking to you. They start saying, They're calling me saying, hey, come over here, let's play. <laughs> <laughs> so if you never go in there, you don't hear them. You only hear, know. You hear a muffled sound. You know, they have to call me over from <laughs> all the way over in the house, and it's hard to hear them through the doors. <laughs> That's a big announcement as far as I'm concerned, okay? Yeah, it is. Uh, and finally, this uh, I'm in a uh, participating in an international exhibition in Barcelona, Spain. My art is over there, and this originally was supposed to have been in March of 2020, but COVID knocked it out. It postponed to October. It still was not ready. Spain is still closed down. Now, finally, Spain has opened up. So from May the first until May the seventh. So if any of our listeners are over in Spain. In the Barcelona area, look for the Art Box Projects uh, 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 Barcelona exhibition. And I'm not even going to begin to tell you the address, but uh, if you live in the area, you probably know where they have their major, the big art exhibitions. It's a, it's a very, it's a big facility, really, really big. They post, I posted a couple of pictures on Facebook. They, they sent out and. Uh, they have a lot of art there. My art there is in the, is, is in digital form, and because I certainly couldn't afford to send my paintings over there, but that's the nice thing about this. I can still say I've I've uh, exhibited uh, internationally and uh, in, in in physical galleries. These art box folks have been nice to me, and coming up here pretty soon, I'll find out in the next day or so. I'm going to have my first solo exhibition. And that will be an online you know, exhibition. So uh, I'll uh, more details about that when, when I receive it. So, yes, thank you, Constance. Constance is clapping. <laughs> <laughs> These are all career steps, you know, baby steps, as our, you know, uh, favorite 
you know, Paul Klein you know, used to say, you have to take the baby steps before you take the big steps. So onward and upward. <laughs> uh, yeah, as long as you have an upward trajectory, then you're being successful. So with yeah. Let's close out this episode, episode 95 of the Artist Friends Podcast for May the 3rd, 2021. And I'm going to say bye-bye to Diane and Constance. And we'll let Diane say goodbye to our listeners. (laughs) Good night, Clyde. Good night, Constance. Good night, everybody. And Constance, your turn. Good night, Clyde. Good night, Diane. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening. Again, I'll second that. Thank you, folks, so much for listening. And please... Give us a thumbs up or a star rating if you enjoy these podcasts. Bye-bye. Until next time. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at W www.dianehuntstudio.com Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.